is a revolution happening across the globe with the rapid development of artificial intelligence touching almost all aspects of our daily lives, and perhaps no more than in the world of photography. Many photo processing companies developing artificially intelligent tools are battling to compete, each offering stunning photo processing tools seeming to do the impossible. Now Adobe have just released a Photoshop version 25 update with a series of brand new AI tools that will change the way you think about your processing whilst also changing the way you process your images forever. Simple to use with mind-blowing results. If you haven't already updated your edition, you certainly will after you watch this demonstration. Hi, I'm Ken Hadfield. Welcome to my Better Photography channel. Okay, so here we are on the desktop. For those of you who haven't updated to the new version, you need to go to the Adobe tab there, and it actually tells you here that it has some updates. Now, I've actually gone to the Photoshop and I've already updated, so it says up to date. At this point here, this would actually give you an option to install. You just press that, wait for it to install, and then it will bring you to this screen here when you open it up it already gives you examples of how to use the various new tools there so you want to go through there just to double check just to get a flavor of how it's done but i'm going to give you a preview of that now i'm going to take a couple of images and i'm actually going to show you in real time how i process these images so what i'm bringing in here is an image that i took in florida last year this was a a rescue a bird rescue chap and uh, they had a heron that had a hook in its beak and it needed to be removed so that the bird wouldn't suffer and would be able to feed again and uh, what i've done here is basically it's a very tight image so I, i'd like actually to do it on this aspect here and uh, so what i've done is i've used the crop tool and i've actually expanded the crop tool out to the size i'd like the image to appear then all we need to do then is to make sure that you press generative expand that's going to tell you to agree that's just the thing you'll see for one time only and it will then generate you'll see the tool here showing the progression as it's actually looking in its photo bank for to find matching background and it's amazing what this can do it's very very accurate i found and it will bring something in the background there which will usually be appealing and here you can see here uh, it's done really quite a good job already there are three versions you can have you check the next one there and another one there and it'll give you a slightly different one each time if you're not happy with any of them just regenerate press the button there it will regenerate again and bring you another three images to play with and so on and so forth until you get an image that you're happy with and uh, we'll have a look at these three but i've spotted one already on the first three that i think i would uh, like to use but we'll see what it comes up with this next three that's that one there Just put a little bit of black in the background again there and there again i don't really like that i would like something that's got less uh, dark artifacts in the back and i think that's probably the best we're going to get for that so i'm quite happy with that however there's one thing i don't really like this guy was rescuing a heron and all i've got is a few fish dropping down to the beach and a bucket at his feet so let's try to do something to get rid of the bucket so i want you to go to the second tool i want to talk about which is generative fill we just do a loose selection around the bucket itself we then go to generative fill don't put anything in that box by the way don't nothing in the dialog box and it will actually remove the bucket and restore the image to what it thinks would be a good image and again this is something that is quite amazing when you see the effect from this uh, i've used it on numerous images now and i've never not been able to find something that i don't like and as you can see without any further ado it's replaced his shoe it's sorted his leg out let's have a look at the other two go to the three selections here that's number two and that's number three and it's just changing the effect on his shoe <laughs> if you look there it's given him a different sock it's got white bands on the sock so that's possibly not one we're interested in i actually quite like that one there which matches the other foot there so 
already we've got a great change to the image. We've taken the annoying and booked it out. We've got the image expanded to an aspect ratio that I'm happy with, but I'm still not very happy. As a, as a photographer, I want to make the story. Now, to make the story here, I need a heron. So where do I get a heron from? Well, this is an amazing thing you can do. You use, again, the uh, lasso tool. Now, this is very important that you use a one to the right size. You make a selection to the correct size. If you don't do it to the correct size, it'll bring a much, much smaller image in there. So I'm trying to make kind of a rough selection there to where I want to see this heron. I'm going to go to generative fill. And this time I'm going to write in the box here, a, a heron with fish in beak. And then we're going to generate. And we sit back and see what Adobe sends us here. And this is where it's looking into its data bank of images that it stores. And it's not using ones off the internet. It's its own stock of, of images, so Adobe stock. And it'll try and find something that will look appropriate. And um, straight off, we've got uh, an appropriate image. And it gives you three variations of the same thing. And uh, the one, I will point out something here. Any image that you bring in here is not high resolution. So you might have a mismatch between your taken image and whatever it's putting in the background. That's a trade-off for being able to make an image that tells a story. And I wouldn't be worried about putting that on the internet. And uh, I just think that is astonishing. That's, so that's two of the three new tools I've shown you. And that's a, a generative expand and generative fill. And it's made another picture out of my original picture. I'm not going to save that. I'm actually going to go to my second image. And it's completely different. And I'm going to do something slightly different with this one. This is a, a wedding image that I took of a couple on a boardwalk. And very nice, but unfortunately it was busy and I couldn't get rid of the people in the background. But with Photoshop, I now should be able to do that. So I, again, go with the lasso tool. Let's try just taking this guy out here. We'll do a loose selection. Very important you do a loose selection or it will replace that man with another man. If you do a, a loose selection around anything, it will assume that you want the same thing placed in the image and it will actually bring back another image of a different person. So that's something you need to know. So let's go to generative fill. I'm going to put nothing in the box. All I want to do is for this guy to disappear. And here we go. We'll just uh, give it a second to make its choice. And then it will send those three images for us to make a selection from. If we're not happy with them, remember, we can actually ask it to generate again and it may do a better job. But to be honest, are you going to get much better than that? I'm not sure. But you can see it does have slightly different effects. You can choose which one that you prefer there. And I think I prefer the one there because it's got the other bar down there. This one doesn't have that and that doesn't look right. So I would be happy with that. Now then, should we do the same with the guys on the other side? I'm going to say no and I'm telling you why. Because there's a lot of detail here that it's going to probably struggle with if you do it as a generative fill. So I'm going to use another brand new tool which I'm so excited about because it is truly amazing. And I'm going to use the brand new remove tool. You've got to go back to your background layer, by the way. It won't use this on the fill layer. So you must go back to your background layer before you use this tool. So then what we're going to do is we're going to expand the tool up. And then we'll just see what we do. We're going to do a bit at a time, just out of interest. Doesn't work every single time, so we'll just give it another go. You can give it as many goes as you like. And there you go. Just keep working until you're happy. And then we'll go to the bottom. That looks fine there. Let's look at this guy here. Can we make him disappear all in one go? Yes, we can. And this lovely lady here is about to disappear. Again, doesn't look quite right down there. Swipe it down again. And there you go, it'll amend it. Now, I, I, <laughs> you tell me whether you know of any program that can do something like this. That is absolutely astonishing. And uh, how useful would that be for me? I can now give this wonderful couple a picture of just themselves on the boardwalk. I would then just use a crop tool to bring that in 
to balance them out in a second and you've got a lovely, lovely, memorable wedding picture using some of the three new tools that Photoshop have actually offered up. I'm blown away by this. Um, I can't tell you how useful this is going to be for all my wildlife and my wedding photography. So I suggest you do download that as soon as you can. Practice, try with it. You've got nothing to lose. And incidentally, for those who've already uploaded the beta version, which you could try this beforehand, the beta version you can now delete and get rid of. I know a lot of people were worried about downloading the beta in case it messed with the original copy of Photoshop. It didn't. It was a side-by-side -side edition of Photoshop. But now you can get rid of that and everything that was on the beta version is now for everyone on the ordinary Photoshop platform. So give it a go. Drop me a line below if you want to tell me your experience and I'll be continuing to do these tutorials to help you to understand just how Photoshop and many other applications can help to make your photography even better. Until then, see you next time on the Better Photography Channel.